So today we're gonna to be creating a motif or theme, just like Matisse. We're gonna be doing a seascape abstract motif using simple shapes and design. Maybe a little bit of detail or no detail at all. And we're gonna be creating a nice feeling of the sea, just like Matisse. So when you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do to get started on our Henry Matisse abstract motif, we're gonna write our name on our Matisse sticker and glue it on the back. Perfect, so once you've glued that on the back, you can just flip that over and set it aside. And now we're gonna get started on our motif. Let me just show you a couple of examples. So our theme I'm gonna show is going to be a seascape theme, just like Matisse did with different fish, abstract, animals, but giving you a sea ocean feeling. Okay, so to start, we're gonna get that light blue and that green paper to make those wavy lines, just like those wavy wave background. So we can hold both pieces of paper together and um, just cut along the paper. That's gonna give you the same shapes for both the blue and the green or we could make it look a little bit different. So the way I wanna cut these papers is I want this to go all the way across my paper, just in case. So what I'm gonna do when I'm cutting is I want the longest strip possible. So I wanna cut vertically, so I'm getting the longest strip possible. If I cut this way, my strips are just gonna be shorter, which isn't the end of the world, but I want them to be the long strips. These could be different varying widths. Let's try to get like five to six strips on each. So this is me drawing it first, and then I'm gonna hold my paper and move it around as I go, maybe changing my grip. This one I'm just gonna draw with my scissors, cutting those wavy, shapes and again I want to get maybe five to six you could get some more or less that's just a general idea so go ahead and start cutting your green and your light blue paper try to get the long strips and we're making it wavy different thickness is fine now we're going to get some of our foreground shapes so we should have some different papers we should have some smaller four by six papers these and then varied colors of these longer skinny ones okay a fish a starfish seaweed maybe a seahorse or some swirly abstract shell shapes so this is where you will be able to get creative want to create um this person had like a starfish and a stingray so you wanna come up with a motif or a theme. So again, I'm doing a seascape. So I'm gonna be thinking about the sea. So we could do some abstract shapes, but also I'm gonna do some maybe um, sea animals, sea life shapes. So let's watch first. So for this one, it's kinda of cool. They have these like lines across their um, wavy seaweed looking shapes. So we could glue those lines on later or we could do something kind of cool. So I might kind of copy them and take, I think I'm gonna take my green paper and I'm gonna cut some wavy black strips. So I'm just drawing with my scissors. So we have our pre-glue pattern technique. So this one, I might do an abstract swirl shape. So again, if I wanted to draw because I'm feeling uncomfortable, I would draw on the back, right? And I would do a circle and I would come in and do that. And then I would try to cut along my shape for just an abstract. Keep all the scraps because we want these um, negative space shapes. 
Okay, maybe I wanna make an abstract seaweed shape. So I'm thinking curvy, wavy shape. Okay, let's think about some more shapes. Um, we could, what about a seahorse? What about a fish or a jellyfish? So if I was going to do a fish, a super simple fish, I would trace on my paper. I would round my edges. And then I would do a tail. So you could do a wavy tail or maybe you want a pointed tail. And then I would do kind of a U shape and then the opposite, like an N shape. So it's a super simple fishy shape that I would cut out. Keeping those scraps, because I might use those later for detail. Okay, if I wanted a seahorse, I might draw that. Thinking about a big kind of backwards S shape where the top is bigger than the bottom. And then I would go from this bottom and kind of stop. And then this would be our seahorse shape. Is that perfect? Nope. But it's basically a big, thick S and I'll add a little bit of details to that. And I would keep my negative space, AKA the scrap paper. This is my negative space, which is actually kind of interesting, isn't it? Okay, uh, what's another sea creature? We could just do a starfish, or we could do a different shape of fish, or what about a jellyfish? So we could do a super simple jellyfish where you just cut out the top, and then you cut out some squiggly legs that you glue, or we could do a little bit more um, one piece jellyfish where I'm gonna cut in here drawing with my scissors, cutting a round shape, coming around. And then I might do some wiggly legs. And I keep my negative space. So we are going to create some shapes. We could do a jellyfish. And do you see how when I cut into my paper, I get this really cool negative shape space, just like this one? Or maybe you just wanna do a simple fish. So if your theme is sea life like mine, we're gonna be thinking about the different sea creatures. And okay, excellent. So we should have some sea life shapes and we should have some wavy paper. So now we need to get organized, right? Because we need to start gluing down some of our items. Okay, so let's get that original paper that we had that we glue our tag on, and we're gonna have it vertical, up and down, and we're gonna go back to those original pieces we cut. So we want those light blue and those green, long, skinny, wavy pieces because these are our background or our ocean. So we're not gonna glue yet, we're just gonna lay it out. We're gonna arrange our composition, and you don't have to use all of these pieces. You're gonna arrange it how you want, and you can overlap. That's why we're not gluing it yet. So maybe you wanna overlap some of these blue and green shapes. Maybe you want some to be vertical going underneath one of your shapes. So we're gonna lay out those blue and green shapes and maybe you decided you don't want the shape to look like this. You wanna go back in a little bit with your scissors and adjust your shape. That's fine, you're gonna do that before you glue. So right now we're just laying out and arranging our composition. Once you have them arranged, you're gonna glue them down. So how do you do this? You don't take them all off at once. We just start with the one that would be at the bottom, my green one, because I see it's down below, and just kind of scooch these pieces over. And I get glue directly on my paper, or on the other paper. And I'm gonna glue it down. I'm sliding it underneath here, gluing it, okay? Some of my pieces shifted, that's fine. I'm gonna glue just the bottom part of this one because I want it to kind of go over and under. So it's okay if you just glue 
just the bottom part to kind of hold that piece where you want it and then you'll glue it after. So, you're gonna... so with the glue stick, it's a lot easier to just glue it down and move it around if necessary. Okay, so you're gonna take your time and arrange and glue our light blue and our green pieces. We're not on to our foreground details. Okay, and then once you think you have everything glued down, you might wanna lift it to make sure you didn't miss anywhere. And then I will have some helpers walking around with a little bit of the wet glue. So if you feel like, oh, I just need a little dab um, here and there, you can have them come and help you. So now we have our background done, right? So, so now we're gonna start arranging our foreground, which are our sea life creatures, or those more intricate sea life shapes. So you're gonna watch me first and we're gonna think by just laying it out and moving it around So before we glue. So I'm gonna have my main shapes. I have my fish and again, maybe I decide, I don't like that fish shape. I'm gonna adjust it with my scissors before I glue down. And we can add a little bit of details on this later. So we should still have pretty simple shapes, okay? So we're just gonna arrange. We're thinking about balance. If I put a large object down here, I might need a large object up here. We're thinking about contrast. If I have green and I put it on green, it's not gonna pop. If I have green and I put it on the blue and the purple, that looks much better, doesn't it? It pops, okay? So we're thinking about contrast and we don't have to use everything that we made, okay? This is just laying out what we think and adjusting our shapes to what we think looks best. Let me give you one other little fun tip. Uh, Matisse liked to use his negative space shapes. So maybe you wanna glue down your negative space. Maybe you wanna use your scissors and just adjust your negative space slightly so it's not just the rectangle, even though Matisse did do a whole piece with just rectangles. So you could use your negative space you could use all your positive space shapes. So the first thing we're doing right now is we are keeping all of our scraps, but we're arranging where we want our sea creatures and our foreground, and then we will glue them. So let's lay it out first, and we don't have to use all of our pieces. Okay, let's say you have some extra pieces and you're realizing for the sake of balance, you might need an extra little something. So I just cut out kind of a starfish blob. So if you have extra pieces of paper and you're realizing for the sake of balance, I might need to add something yellow up here to balance my other guy. So you're thinking about balance, so feel free to start cutting out. If you need extra shapes, start using those scraps to help you balance. And then once you feel happy with it, you'll start gluing everything down and you can kind of even arrange as you go. Okay, so once we've glued down our main pieces, we're gonna start to check, do like a balance check. So I'm noticing up here I added this starfish, but I just used some of my scraps because I realized I think I like having a little bit of the yellow pop. So I'm starting to go through my scraps and since I have some yellow up there, I think I might want some yellow down here. So maybe I'm gonna take some of my scraps and start adding to my shapes to make it more interesting and balanced. So if you wanna start looking for a balance check if you feel like you have some yellow somewhere and you need it somewhere else, you could kind of start using those scraps and sticking them where you need to, which is gonna add a little bit of detail, but it's also gonna kind of balance out your art a little bit. Okay, so once we have our balance check and we kind of feel like we're liking where things are going, we are gonna add some details. So let's think about fishy details. Um, maybe your fish has some eyes. 
Maybe you want to add some of those swirly lines that you didn't add before. So you can start taking a little bit of those pieces. It's still very simplified. We're not trying to make it realistic. Maybe you want to add some bubbles. These circles that look like fishy bubbles, okay? So if we want, this person didn't do any details and it still looks great. This person added some eyeballs. So we're thinking about balance, but now if we want to add a little bit of detail, we can. So I would use my scraps and cut out the certain shapes. So maybe I want to add a little bit of a, I already have a pretty cool shape right here, some sort of mouth looking shape or just an added highlight. Doesn't that kind of look like a little highlight if I throw it right there? Okay, maybe my fish needs a little tail mark. So I already have these cool scrap shapes. I might just roll with it. Okay, so now my fish maybe has a stripe. Maybe my fish needs an eyeball. Is that a perfect eyeball? It's not, but that's fine. Okay, I could do a fin. Maybe I want my fish to have a fin. So I'm using the scraps that I have and I'm gonna add some details to my fish and my other um, elements. I could add patterns if I wanna add some more lines anywhere. Uh, maybe I could do some little scale patterns on my starfish. So go ahead and add some details using our scrap paper, eyes, scales, fins, Okay, my friends, so we're just about done with our Matisse abstract seascape. So you're just doing any final details. If you feel like yours doesn't look that balanced, you can add a little bit more scraps. Pick it up to just make sure you have everything glued. And if you need the helper to just walk around and give you little dabs of glue for just like maybe those little extra fins you added. And then your name should be on the back because we glued that at the beginning. So just double check that, and then you are done with your abstract seascape motif by Matisse. Great job, you guys, on your Henry Matisse abstract sea motif. Hopefully you guys created a feeling of the ocean or the sea. If you guys have time to evaluate each other's work, you could talk about balance, color, or maybe you created your own motif or theme. And I hope you had a good time doing an abstract Henry Matisse C motif. And I'll see you next time on Art Masters.